Welcome back to Jitterbug TV. And this week, we're gonna complete what we were learning last week, the three ball juggle. juggle. Now, before you do the old three balls, go up the tricks, etc. there is there's a little two-person juggle that we can learn. You can learn with a friend, maybe your mummy, your daddy, your granny, your granddad, your brother, your sister, whoever you happen to have in your isolation station with you. And, uh, I myself, I'm lucky enough to have Philippa O'Hara. This is Philippa. Philippa has been helping me make these little videos. So please, a round of applause for Philippa. Now, Philippa actually did teach Philippa the juggle, so she's coming from an experienced position. And one of the things we learned was the three ball Siamese juggle, which is two people and three balls. And it just kind of slows down the pattern that you're going to learn, makes it a little bit easier. So, Philip, you have the ball, one ball in your left hand, and I have two balls in my right hand. Pop this on here just to get us in a nice, comfortable position. When I throw the first ball, and it's just about to drop, Philip, you're going to throw that ball from your left hand over to my right hand, somewhere close to me. Perfect triangle. I'm going to throw this one back, so we'll boom, 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 we juggle three balls together, Sandy style. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> throw. Throw. <laughs> So, oh, eh, right, okay. It's a little bit messy, but that's okay. It's a really good start. <laughs> that might not work for you. Felt it's done before, so it's a bit easier. But let's see. When this ball is just about to drop, that's when you throw yours. It's perfect. Slow, slow, slow. Nice. Lovely. <clears throat> Here we go. <sighs> no, that was lovely. That was very good. But it is good to breathe. <laughs> relax. When you're juggling, you relax your shoulders. Relax your head, relax your neck, relax your neck. Three balls, this is going to be perfect. Throw, throw. My first throw wasn't great, your third one up, there we go. You're getting better, you're a little bit high. You can keep it somewhere within this solar system. Solar system. That would be lovely, and we're going to come into a finish. Lovely. <laughs> nice one. Right, we'll close. I'm sorry, but I'm going to go to the end of the right hand. I'm using my right hand, we're using your left, which is, for some people, difficult. So we'll just swap to make sure and ensure that both our arms and hands and brains are working. You're now going to be on, on my right. She's moving me, she believes, as a filmmaker, that I'm not quite in the shot. Yeah. Let's see. We'll see when it comes to watch. <laughs> so. You've now got two balls in your right hand, I've got one in my left. And you probably think, oh, it's a little bit, oh. Some people find it a little bit tricky to get started. Just get comfortable, and you can move the balls around in your hands. Get comfortable how you hold them. You've got to want to make sure you can release the first one. So there you go, nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. Some of us have smaller hands than others. There we go. You can rest your hand upon my shoulder. Relax your shoulders. Relax your head and your neck. Relax your knees. knees. And go. There we go. Where, where are we? We're up and running. That's pretty good, Philippa. That's quite good. Now you'll see Philippa is actually more comfortable with her right hand. She's got complete control. And that's why it's often better for Philippa to stand on the left because it improves <laughs> her manipulation with her left hand. That. That's lovely. Philippa, thank you very much. I think we've just got time for the library. The library. The library. <laughs> you got cooking upon those shelves. Books by Yates of space and greats, mosquitoes and elves. What you got cooking? Can I have a look in your library of love? Welcome to the Library of Love, where I, Jitterbug Jackson, choose a book of the week. A book that I recommend for you to read at home. And this one is by one of my favourites, Sean Tan. And uh, 
He's a great artist and writer and uh, someone who creates very imaginative pieces of work that are quite suitable for, I think mostly for kids and adults. And this one's called Rules of Summer. And I suppose I've been thinking a lot about the summer coming up. We're all stuck here in isolation. We haven't quite as much freedom as we usually have. And kids, I'm sure, are thinking, well, I want to make sure I can get out and do the things that I love to do in the summer. Be outside playing, climbing trees, having fun. And this book reminds me a lot of whenever I was a kid and me and my brother, and the book is about two brothers. There's the wee one, that was me. There's the big one, that was my brother Robert. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the summers back then when Robert would make up all the rules of what we'd do each day. And uh, yeah, you kind of go along with it. But you can see there's some very beautiful Lovely artwork there. Yeah, this is what I learned last summer. But I'll flip through a little bit. Never eat the last olive at a party. Never drop your jar. Never step on a snail. Look at the chaos in the background there. Never ruin the perfect plan. Never argue with an umpire. That reminds me a lot of the uh, football and the cricket and the tennis that we played and Wimbledon would come along. We've got lovely images there. Never forget the password. Never ask for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Never lose a fight. So there's lots, lots of lovely advice for the summer and the thing is that it does remind me of being a kid and I suppose this week's Library of Love is all about wishing you all a very lovely, lovely summer, 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 summer. You should be ready for the finale, the three ball juggle, but I thought, you know, before we do that, we could try something slightly different. In the first episode, we had a go at some hat tricks. Um, they were hat tricks that you could probably use for hats that maybe that you find in your house, maybe your dad's bowler hat, your granddad's top hat, uh, your your, uh, your mum's uh, bonnet for Easter. But I'm, of course, using a hat that it's made for, hat juggling, which makes it maybe a little bit easier, but just keep trying. So we tried the nose picker trick, which involved nose picker under here, nose picker under here, and three fingers across like so. And we then just put a lovely little roll onto the head like that. And uh, if you remember, we did try to suggest that it's nice to not look at the hat while we do the trick. So then the other trick was just a simple throw. So you throw it under your hand, one spin, one spin, spindling, and on to the head. Almost as if you're heading a ball. Flick, boom, and onto the head. So that was two tricks that hopefully you've been practicing this week. Let's give you two more. Um, this one, a little favorite of mine. This is a little Charlie Chaplin number. A little flick, like so. So, now I'm getting funny faces here from Paula, but oh, she's, no, it's, she's, she's doing a little bit of direction, I think. Uh, Let's flick it, I'll step back a little bit. She wants me to step back, that's a nod. Step back, a little flick, and under the head like so. So you'll notice once again, I'm not looking. The hat is traveling in the same way as it traveled up here. It's traveling up to this hand. Flick, and on. You're trying not to look, you're also trying to just catch that. A little flick into the hand like so. So my hand is, see I'm waiting. This one spin under the head. That's a little chapel number. I've seen him use it in films. He just uses it very elegantly. It's almost quite a little, a little throw him under the head. I quite like it also going quite high. So you just have a little bit of fun. That's how you put that under your head. One little flick, so you have your nose picker. You've got your, your football under the head and your Charlie Chaplin. So that's three tricks. Let's go for number four. We're going to call this the Diego Pegmire. This one, we flick the hat 
And once again, one little spin, we fling it on and under the foot, like so. It's on the foot, I fling it up and not under the head. <laughs> I got away with that one, didn't it? So it is like one spin under your hand, but instead of your hand, it's one spin onto your foot. And from your foot, onto your head. So this one, because you're kicking the hat, do be careful of all the things you have around you. Probably better to do this in your back garden. So I just repeat myself as one to the hand. It's good. Just to warm up, just a little flex, so you get that lovely little spin, one tight little spin, and one spin onto your foot. Back up, onto the head. You'll see that I'm just putting my foot out at the very last minute to catch the hat, that just like that, and up onto the head. Now that one is gonna take a little bit of practice. Don't over kick, don't over flick. Any little flicks, all these tricks are usually one little spin, so it's a good way to just get used to the hat. Spin, 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 Charlie Chaplin, spin, one spin, and with the head. So, have a little bit of fun with those, and I'll see you next week for more tricks with the hat. This is the Lockdown Lamentations. For anybody watching in the future, Jitterbug TV was in fact filmed during isolation in the great lockdown of 2020 and we thought maybe you'd like to meet some of the viewers at home talking about their experience of being in isolation. What do I miss? I miss, I miss uh, my walks. I walk every day for 40 minutes. Um, um, I miss my knitting class. I love knitting. Love the class, love the people. I, I've made so many friends there. We go on trips and things. I miss that really badly. And uh, of course, my grandchildren. Uh, it's it, my, my, for instance, my grandson called last night with a bottle of wine for my husband and myself, left it outside the door. And uh, I waved to him from the window. I would have loved to have gone out and given him a big hug. I miss that, my grandchildren's hugs. <laughs> because we're a very demonstrative kind of family, we hug each other a lot, and, and I do miss that. And uh, you know, I miss freedom, freedom of going out. But I'm not negative about anything. I'm quite positive actually, because what's the point? You know, it's easy to be positive as negative. Um, everybody seems to be in good form. Everyone seems to be helping each other. And I find, I find now that it's going to bring the best out in people, I think. I watch out the window and I see people passing by. I haven't seen any really sad faces. And people are ringing up and saying, are you okay? And sending messages. And, and it's brought an awful lot of good out in people. And I think that that's very important. Money, positions, all that has gone out the window when something like that comes and something happens like this and the good is going to come out of it and I'm going to go back and do my walking and I go back to hugging my grandchildren and the future's the looking future's bright. Looking bright.
And now I think it's time for all of you at home to try the three ball juggle that we've been leading up to this whole time. Um, I thought though, probably good for a quick recap. You'll remember you had, and you started by making your own juggling ball. Amazing, amazing, and thank you for all the lovely photographs and the videos of you making juggling balls. We uh, then moved on to the throwing one ball from hand to hand with a clap, with a clap, with a clap, clap, and a clap, and clap, and give it a clap, give it a clap. Yes, we reminded, be careful where we're juggling. We don't want to wreck anything. We don't want to hit it in the lovely lampshades, the lovely ornaments. We then moved on to two balls. Two balls. And with that, we did, why well, we tried, tried a few tricks, we tried to do it in one hand, we tried flicking it above, we tried behind our back, we tried just the normal cascade pattern that would be the key to learning three. Well, throw, throw, catch, catch, throw, throw, catch, catch, criss, cross, applesauce, some people said, criss, cross, brown sauce, criss, cross, tomato sauce, criss, cross, yes. So we had two. We practiced and we practiced two balls until we were absolutely sure that we could absolutely juggle that little pattern. Then we tried Siamese juggling. Philippa was here, yeah, remember Philippa? Yeah, we tried the two of us side by side. Juggling, hi Philippa, hello, well done. Well done. And then we moved on to where we are now. Three, three juggling balls by yourself. Now, this is actually quite difficult and will take a lot more practice, but you've come this far, you'll get there. You've got two in one hand, in the same way as when I was on the right side of the other side, two in one hand. This time you're on your own. You've got one in your left hand, two in your right. Now you can, if you prefer to start on your left, you can go with two in your left. One on your right. I don't care, but I always seem to start with two on my right, one on my left. I take a deep breath. I relax my shoulders. I relax my arms. I relax my legs. My legs. And then I'm ready to begin. Throw, throw, throw. And that's basically it. And that looked easy. And it is actually quite easy once you get your brain to work out what your body's trying to do. You go, throw, throw, throw. Oh. Then you might go again. You might go, oh, I was so close, I was so close. Throw, 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 throw. That was four, actually. Let's count them. Because if you count them, you start to realise how far you're getting and how close you're getting to actually doing this. So you go, one, two, three. And you'll go, you yeah, go, I'm, I'm going through it, I can't do it. You can do it, you can do it. Come on, everyone, you can do this. One, two, three, four. Oh, that was incredible, incredible. Come on, let's do it, everyone. Let's do it. Relax, breathe. We were all going to be with ourselves. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's five. And I Philip actually said, that when she got the five, she was realizing, oh my God. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I've got one, two, three, four, five. She was thinking, I'm doing this, I'm getting, she's right, you are getting it, you're getting it. If you get to five, you're really, really cracking this nutshell. Go for six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so because of what you're doing, you're trying constantly to beat your own personal record. Go through, sometimes it, ah, it's not working, sometimes it, oh God, it's all the way there. <laughs> But what you got to do is just relax, relax, relax. Just keep, keep trying. Come on, one, two, three, four. Eventually, you get these things under control. And you realize if you just relax, it's actually quite slow. It's actually quite relaxing. It's quite good for the head. It's good fun, it's good physically for you. It's good for your brain, because your brain is trying something it's probably never really tried before. And the more you relax, the more you practice, the 
easier it is to do anything that you want. Information is not knowledge, knowledge is not wisdom, wisdom is not truth, truth is not beauty, beauty is not love, love is not music, music is the best. It takes a lot to love you. So, this week's choice for music is the best is a pop classic. It's ABC, the lexicon of love. And this one I'm kind of choosing for all you people at home, all you mums and dads, grannies and granddads who are probably doing a lot of dancing in the kitchen. And if you're gonna have a dance in the kitchen, and you wanna dance to something as good as that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, classics such as, of course, The Look of Love, Poison Arrow, you've got All of My Heart. This album, start to finish, is a pop classic. And this is perfect to get you through those long evenings of isolation to the future, to love and romance. romance. Now, I know that some of you already are beginning to learn three ball juggling, and that's amazing, and all credit to all the hard work you're putting in. And then we've also had correspondence from those of you who can already do three balls and would like to learn a couple of tricks. So this little section is for you especially. but. Anyone, just keep watching, just keep having fun, keep on practicing. So, the first thing, you've got your three balls. You can, you've collected, you've counted one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Once you saw it, I would say if you get to about 50 throws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 50, then I think you're in really good shape to try some tricks. So, the first one you're gonna try is to throw one of those balls higher and back into the pan. Now this one, of course, we're doing in the living room. It's a little bit dangerous for any of the nice ornaments, so do be careful, or perhaps go into your gardens or your yards. Keep everything safe. One higher, and back into the pan. Now I'm gonna throw it from the right hand. You're also gonna try and throw it from the left. Higher. One higher. Left. And basically, that trick looks very simple, but it's a little bit harder than it looks because you've got one higher and it's dropping back into the pattern. You should have one in each hand. As you wait for this one to fall, you're ready to throw and back into the cascade. So you can try it from a, a still position. I couldn't find the words there. So you're going to throw the right one first, throw it up and into the pattern. Here we go. Try it again. Throw it up and back into the pattern. So you'll see a fill up it keeps on the two hands here. There's one in each hand. It goes up and then back into the pattern. Here it comes, here it comes, boom, and into the pattern. You can try throw it from your left hand, throw it up, and then into the pattern. So that is a very good trick to get you used to just improving your three ball pattern just by forcing yourself into slightly more difficult situations. So that is the three ball, one high. So, a second trick with three balls. I'm gonna call this one the uh, Roger Federer. And this is Roger over here in my right hand, and he flicks the ball over to my left. So you'll see the normal pattern, and then I just flick it right over the top. It does a nice little half Moon across the top. Over my left hand here, that's Nadal. Nadal, you're gonna flick the ball over that way. So we've got Roger flicking the ball that way, Nadal flicking the ball that way. 
Now that's probably becoming a little bit more complicated for you there. I'm pop down now, this is difficult for film and film. So, Roger throws the ball over that side. Roger over that side. Nadal, this side. I, I actually cannot remember Nadal's first name. I feel quite bad about that. Raphael. Roger. What's his name? Raphael. Raphael. There's Roger over that side. Raphael that side. No. We're going to have a little match together. This is if you're really getting confident, throwing Roger with that side, Raphael with that side. They're going to go, Roger, Raphael, Roger, Raphael, Roger, Raphael, Roger, Raphael, Roger, Raphael. Good luck with that. If you get that, then you might as well become a professional. professional. Thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.